After high school, I was lucky to get a job that kept me busy during my one year vacation. On that job, I met a friend who introduced me to reading non-fiction books. He lent me Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People, a book that started my personal development journey. When I got a scholarship to go to the university, I decided that I was going to be a reader for the rest of my life. Welcome to Nurtured by Books, a community where achievers like you testify to ideas and books that change their lives. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on ideas from the world's smartest minds. In this video, we will be discussing the secret to building a lasting habit, a lesson learned from the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. Since I was new in a French-speaking country, I did not know where to get English books. So I resolved to reading ebooks because I never wanted to give the scarcity of bookshops as an excuse for not reading. I borrowed a PC from my friend where I downloaded the ebooks I was going to read. In my hostel, my promotion mates used to meet for a movie night every evening at around 8.30 p.m. So I decided to use this time to go to one of their rooms and read a book for two hours every single day, whether I felt like it or not. Going to my reading room at 8.30 p.m. helped me to discipline myself to read up to when my friends were back from the movie. After reading for months, reading became part of me and I started reading even during the day for so many hours without looking at the clock. Your identity emerges out of your habits and every action. In the words of Lao Tzu, watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character, and watch your character, it becomes your destiny. Whether you want to believe it or not, your behavior is usually a reflection of your identity. The most effective way of building a habit is to focus not on what you can achieve, but on what you wish to become. The real reason why habits matter is not because they can get you better results, although they can do that, but because they can change your beliefs. When we reverse engineer the process, what we want to become, our identity can help us build the habits we desire to have in our lives. In the book Atomic Habits, the writer argues that true behavior change is identity change. You might start a habit because of motivation, but the only reason why you will stick with one is that it becomes part of your identity. In my story, my goal was not to read a book, it was to become a reader. Your goal too should not be to run a marathon, but to become a runner. Since I had incorporated reading into my identity, I did not have to convince myself to read because it was the right thing any reader could do. When your behavior and identity are aligned, you are no longer pursuing behavior change. You are simply acting like the type of person you already believe yourself to be. If you build your identity first, you will automatically take the action that will become a habit and thus form a feedback loop. When I was building my habit, I decided that I'd read a book for two hours from a particular table in a specific room and at a specific time every evening. This is what James Clear calls implementation intention of a habit, which is defining the behavior, the time, and the location where the action is going to be performed. In the implementation intention, one should indicate what they will do on days that are not favorable. For example, when situation X happens, I will perform action Y. This helps you not to justify your laziness when unexpected happenings occur. When you associate your desired habit with another obvious habit that happens to you naturally every day, you will always have a game plan for which action should come next. This is called habit stacking. It helps you to remember what you promised yourself to do. You just have to select the right cue to kick things off. For example, you can tell yourself to do five push-ups whenever you pick up a towel to shower if you want to lose weight. In my case, Whenever my friends were going to watch a movie, I was reminded that my time for reading had come. If you want to sustain your habit, James Clear advises that the action that forms the habit should be made obvious and very simple so that it doesn't need motivation to start. At the start, don't aim for perfection. Aim for daily practice without procrastination. After all, a habit is something you do on a daily basis. Always remember the two-minute rule of habit building, which states that when you start a new habit, it should take less than two minutes to do. It only takes two minutes to start a habit. It can then be refined and modified. Going to the gym and working out for only five minutes may sound stupid to a person who is ambitious about losing weight. But remember, to the brain, working out for only five minutes will seem so easy. 
especially on the rainy day when you don't feel like. You see, one push-up is better than not exercising at all. One minute of reading is better than not picking up a book at all. The point is to master the habit of showing up. The habit must be established before it can be improved. If you can't learn the basic skill of showing up, then you have little hope of mastering the finer details. Instead of trying to engineer a perfect habit at the start, do the easy thing on a more consistent basis. You have to standardize before you optimize. This is the logic. The more you ritualize the beginning of a process, the more likely that you will slip into the state of deep focus that is required to do great things. By following the same creative ritual, you make it easier to get into the hard work of creating. Make the first action mindless, make it easy to start and the rest will follow. When you read one page of a book and stop after that page every day, this is what you will be telling yourself after a few weeks. I always open a book and read every day anyway. I might as well open one more page. Before you know it, you'll be an established reader who reads a book in two weeks. As I said in the beginning, identity is the key to building lasting habits. The two-minute rule discussed above reinforces the identity you want to build. If you show up in the gym 10 days in a row, even if it's just for two minutes, you are casting votes for your new identity. You are not worried about results, in this case losing weight, but you are focused on becoming a person who never misses workouts. You are taking the smallest action that confirms the type of person you want to be. After establishing the habit of showing up each day, then you can now move to another important step of combining the two-minute rule with what the writer calls habit shaping, which means scaling your habit up to your ultimate goal. You master the first two minutes of the smallest version of the behavior and then advance into an intermediate step and repeat the process while focusing on the first two minutes and mastering the stage before moving on to the next level. In the end, you will end up with the habit you wanted to build while still keeping your focus on where it should be. On building the identity of the person you want to be and then reverse engineering the process through the two minutes rule. Have you ever started a habit to help you become a different person and help you build a new identity? If you have, comment below with the words lasting habits. Thank you so much for watching our videos. If you have found this one valuable, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss interesting videos like this. Switch on the notification bell to be the first to know when we upload a new video. And check on your screen, we have unpicked two more videos for you to enjoy next.